Let's welcome in the Attorney General of West Virginia, Patrick Morrissey, via telephone. Patrick, good morning to you, sir. Hey, good morning, Rob. Good morning, Bill. Hope things are going well. Very well. Before we get into the serious interview, uh, uh, Pat, uh, I hope you realize you have you have uh, put an image in front of me that I'm hard to get over. Every time I think of you, I hear your name or think of you, I think of you as a tennis referee <laughs> taking on John McNamara and taking on the others. And that is a wonderful image to have, Pat. You, you know what? You should actually see it live. It's a lot more fun. I'm sure. Uh, we've done demonstrations in the office of uh, kind of mimicking these tennis tournaments. But, no, I, look, I feel very, very fortunate. I had some great experiences. Uh, you know, we didn't grow up with uh, very much money, so I had all these very odd jobs growing up. But one of my favorites, certainly when I was uh, 19, 20, 21, when I – served as a professional tennis umpire and uh it was a blast i had the chance to travel for the first time in my life i had the chance to uh really do something that i loved i, I loved playing tennis i i played growing up i played in high school i played in college and uh to have the chance to umpire and get to the finals of the u.s open i mean it's just kind of one of these uh neat little things you get to do in life and build on yeah, not too many people say they were a tennis referee <laughs> at right. the U.S. Open Championship. Until John McEnroe to shut up. <laughs> well, well, you know, the, once again, I think the best part is that uh, I can look back and say, hey, that was great preparation for politics because I got used to getting screamed out of stadiums, you know? So sure. You get used to the boobers. <laughs> <laughs> and you get a high, very high chair, too, so you have a great view of everything that's going on there, Absolutely. too. Absolutely. Yeah. Hey, uh, Patrick, uh, explain to me what the statement, don't settle for second best, big news is coming, means. You know, I, I think a lot of people are stepping into the arena right now, and they're talking about running in 2024. And uh, I, I want folks to know that I am seriously evaluating what office I will be pursuing. You know, I've been principally looking at whether I should uh, run for a governor or for U.S. Senate. And so I think a lot of people are stepping out at such an early clip. We just want folks to know that the person with the best record of fighting and winning for West Virginia is still doing his day job in the AG's office. I think if you look at the record of what we've been able to accomplish in recent years, uh, people should know that when we put our mind to it, we get really big things done that help our state. Uh, and whether we're talking about successfully defending the Hope Scholarship, having the number one, the top rated per capita opioid settlements in the nation, having a settlement agreement with the counties and cities. Think about this. For the first time ever, Every one of the counties in the state of West Virginia and the state have a plan for how to deal with the critical issue of the day, and that's the opioid epidemic. And uh, this is just incredibly important for the future of our state, for our workforce, uh, taking on the federal government and their overreach and winning one of the biggest separation of powers cases in a long time, uh, heading up and winning the Waters United States uh, case. Uh, I mean, there's just a, a long list of issues that we've taken on that help West Virginia. And so when I see a lot of other people stepping forward, I say, that's fine. And people are you're not going to hear anything negative from me uh, on these folks. But I want folks to understand that uh, if you're looking for someone who's going to be able to really help West Virginia reach your potential, uh, we haven't made a decision yet, and we're, we're going to come at the right time. Patrick, let me finish one more question here, Bill. Does it make sense that we would assume you're going to run for governor, Patrick, since your timing yesterday coincided with Mac Warner's timing? No, look, I, I, we're looking closely at the different options, and I, I'll be honest with you guys, a lot of people started this process almost immediately after the election, and I, I don't think that the public was – that they were eager – to have another election begin almost days after uh, the election this past November. So, you know, I, I think that my message has been very similar the last couple months. There's still more work that I want to get done in the AG's office, 
And uh, we're still in a really good, strong position uh, because of uh, past strength, name ID, and obviously we I think we have a lot of support around the state and in the eastern panhandle. So, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't read too much into it other than uh, when we come, we're going to come with a lot of strength, and I think our record, feel good to say this now, is going to be a heck of a lot stronger than uh, the folks that are stepping up. A couple of questions, Patrick. Uh, one, uh, you keep mentioning uh, that the timing needs to be right. When do you, when is the optimum time for you to make a decision and make an announcement? You know, I think right now the legislative session uh, that begins today, and they're looking at a number of initiatives. I know that uh, we're looking to work with the legislature on uh, some important opioid issues, some fentanyl issues, and other topics. And these are things that I've been very passionate about because I want to get it right. I want to stop the senseless death that's occurring. Uh, fentanyl, certainly, from what's happening at the border, and uh, opioids to set up a structure that I think is going to make a big difference over the next few decades for people. So I'd like to, to move and to get that through. Now, uh, does that mean that we'll make an announcement after the session? Will it be sometime in February or March? And I'm going to look at that. I'm going to evaluate that in the upcoming weeks. But there's still a little bit more that I'd like to personally get done. And you'll see probably in the next week we're going to have another big announcement uh, on a topic that uh, I think people will be very pleased about. So you know, I think once you announce, it does make it a little bit harder to get some of the other things done. And so we've been laser focused on just getting big things done. I mean, a lot of people love to see their name in the papers and they do it for the ego. I like to get big things done. That's always been the model. I think, you know, a lot of people know that we just push through because we like to accomplish things. And, and otherwise, why, why would you want to have one of these jobs? And so I want to get a little bit more done. And uh, when we get a few more things done, then I think, you know, likely see me step up and make a decision so one of the uh, uh one of the major concerns of any election is money getting <laughs> a money available uh is there some risk if you wait too long that the money will be already committed or do you think there's still opportunity to get the sufficient money to uh to support your you race know, I, I don't think so because right now we're probably uh i think three to six times ahead of where everyone else is in terms of resources that we need uh, for a race. So, you know, if you look at some of the people that are running, I know that a lot of them are you know, trying to lock some folks down, but um, I, I think we've had a good base of support. Obviously, we have always done very well with uh, folks in the community, low dollar uh, resources, but we've done, uh, we, we really have built a, a positive network and i think once again i think the closest person uh out there uh we have three to four times the resources already and uh i i think we're going to be in a pretty good position and we're going to keep building on that and and i think the right people will uh, provide us with an opportunity because once again if people want to get big things done they know that uh they have to turn to a particular place and uh, I, I feel pretty good about uh, the fact that there are a lot of people that are going to want to support uh, someone with this type of record and also um, someone who will come in who will be one of the favorites to win. Uh, you've said you're, you're deciding between uh, running for governor or running for the Senate. Uh, what criteria are you using? Or is there one one or two major points will be the make you be the tipping for your decision? You know, I think the biggest thing is how can you contribute best to help the people of our state? And I know that part of the reason why I was, you know, I ran for attorney general is I thought that there was a, a kind of unique niche of things that I was able to do because of my background as a regulatory lawyer. And I knew that uh, we had certain skills to take on uh, the growing size and scope of the administrative state and the federal bureaucracy. And I thought that was a good niche, and it's proven to be correct. We had big, big wins for West Virginia, and obviously that carried over into the opioid work where I think people now know, wow, that those are some of the best settlements and best uh, results that we're going to see in the nation. So I'm looking at the nature of the problems, the challenges uh, that face West Virginia, 
And I, I do think that my background would fit very, very well uh, in either one of those particular uh, posts. Uh, but, you know, I'm giving a lot of thought to it because you want to make sure that at the end of the day, this is for West Virginia citizens. And, you know, certainly it's not something you do for the money. It's something you do to make sure that you're going to um, help our state get through some of the really big challenges that it faces. Obviously, we need to become more competitive economically with all the states that we touch. I think there are some good things that have been done, but we need to be uh, much more bold in terms of some of the economic issues out there so that West Virginia uh, wins all of the battles against uh, the Virginias, the Maryland's, the Ohio's, the Kentucky's, the Pennsylvania's, uh, that West Virginia is thought of as a place with one of the best educational systems, and that it's the type of place that's so attractive to people. I think that things are being done to move West Virginia in that direction, and I'm very supportive of a lot of the things that the legislature and the governor have been working on and, and focusing on. But I do think that there's a lot more that we can do um, to help stem the uh, population loss that we've seen in West Virginia. That's That's got to be a big part of it that we need uh, West Virginia to become uh, a place that more uh, young, uh, able-bodied workers want to come. Uh, I think that's going to be critical. But it also uh, needs to remain a place that's retaining its West Virginia values. Uh, this is a special, special state, and we need to make sure that uh, the woke ideas that are coming out of D.C. and in other places – uh, don't manifest themselves here in a way that's going to hurt what I think people love about our state. Patrick, uh, there's a uh, on the governor's side, there's at least four, five, six people that have already declared or anticipate they declare. On the Senate side, uh, only Congressman Mooney has declared. Uh, would you have a preference to run in a crowded field or on a just against a single opponent? Or does it make any you difference? Know, we're just taking a look at all those issues. And so uh, right now, I think it'd be premature to say which direction uh, we're, we're moving in. But I will say this, people should take a look and see, one, this is what we're getting done in the upcoming weeks and months ahead in terms of our day job. I mean, that's the thing. A lot of people step up and then you say, well, what have you done in office? And what, what kind of credibility do you have uh, that you can go to voters to say, uh, I should be promoted to the next position. Uh, I don't want people to ever even have that question, that they just absolutely instinctively know, wow, this guy goes in and he kills it every day, and uh, whatever the issue, he's going to do it to the best of his ability, and it's going to be a, a really high-quality product, and we're going to uh, rack out a number of wins. So that's what I'm focusing on right now, and I'm not going to get into all the details about – a campaign strategy or choices right now. And I think there are fine people that always consider running. And uh, that's why you're not hearing me talk negatively about, you know, any candidate. Uh, but I, I do think that we want to make sure that people know, wow, this record is something that is just very different than what we normally see from someone seeking public office. While we have the opportunity, let's switch back to your current job as attorney general. You put out a warning about post-holiday employment scams. What's up with that? Absolutely. So you guys know that uh, scammers uh, come out uh, all year round, uh, but they also come out during particular times when the opportunity to steal from people is at its highest. And a lot of times people after the holidays, they're looking for employment opportunities. And so when we hear that, we know that uh, there are uh, people out there that are trying to rip folks off. Uh, they might suggest that as you're looking for employment, you have to put some money up front in order to get the right type of uh, opportunity. Um, there may be promises of work at home uh, positions, but uh, there's really not a meaningful opportunity behind that. So we wanted to put together some tips in terms of what people may want to look at in order to make sure that the job opportunity they're pursuing is actually legitimate and uh, using extra caution when you're looking at job ads and making sure that the job is what they're saying it is. 
checking the business's <coughs> excuse me, legitimate website or calling the phone numbers to make sure that the uh, business is authentic, uh, doing searches for the position and seeing, is this a scam? Is the same position posted in multiple places? And uh, is what you see actually what you would get? And so we, we want to provide that information to people because a lot of folks look for jobs after the holidays, and we want to make sure that we're helping them. And, in fact, if people hear about a scam, they should call our office, call 1-800-368-8808. And I think people know that we have a really good consumer protection division. We try to help folks out, and we just always want to – it's always better to be preventative – and help people out before you get ripped off. And that's why we give some of these tips. Let's talk about the ability to corral the extensive robocall and robotext industry that's out there, Patrick, and what can be done at the attorney general level. Yes, so this is one of the issues where we literally have, gentlemen, every single attorney general on the same page working together. So we've actually come together uh, with all the AGs and with a lot of the telephone companies to make it much easier for us to get subpoenas uh, and for us to coordinate with them because a lot of the scammers come in, they interject themselves uh, into the phone line system, and that's been a huge problem. Uh, but, you know, at, at the end of the day, this is as much a technology issue and problem, and it's an FCC problem. And so we obviously work and try to constantly put pressure on the Federal Communications Commission to um, help facilitate the tools that will make it easier to block these robocalls. And I think everyone listening knows that one of the challenges with robocalls is that there are ways that you could stop the calls. I mean, people could just opt to not get calls at all. But I don't think people like that solution because you don't want to end phone conversations or block too many calls, the calls that you want to come in. Um, but what we try to do is uh, encourage companies to develop that technology, and then we speak with one voice, putting a massive amount of pressure on Congress and the Federal Communications Commission to keep developing the technologies that are going to allow this problem to go away. I, I would encourage people to call their phone carrier and ask what the latest apps are, the latest tools are, because there are some tools that will help cut down the numbers considerably, and you should at least explore that possibility, because these are annoying calls. We all get them. I get them. They're terrible, uh, but we have to at least look at all the little tools that might help us and reduce that wasted time. Are there additional opioid settlements that will be reached in 2023, Patrick? Uh, I'm going to make a prediction that the answer is yes. Uh, we're not ready to uh, provide that information on the uh, phone today right now, but I'm hopeful that we can get uh, all of our remaining cases done. We have a, a trial a set uh, coming up in June, and so I'm hopeful that we will be able to make further progress either between now and June or if need be, of course, we go to trial again like we did last year, and that proved to be very, very successful for our state. So I do anticipate that uh, this will be the year I'm hopeful we can uh, really finish a lot of that litigation. And, gentlemen, the reason that's, that's very, very important is because we knew about the problem with the uh, pain pills um, and the, the alleged violations of a law uh, that are out there, but uh, obviously, the fentanyl issues and the other drugs that are coming in uh, that are slaughtering our citizens, especially a lot of our young people. You guys know that between the ages of 18 and 46, fentanyl is killing more Americans than any other cause of death. And that's got to get addressed. And I've been spending a lot of time also ensuring that we're trying to do the things to help uh, on the fentanyl front, whether it's classifying fentanyl as a weapon of mass destruction or um, urging increased prosecutions uh, to Merrick Garland, or trying to get the Homeland Security Department and the U.S. Secretary of State to do their jobs in terms of whether it's putting pressure on the Chinese or uh, the Mexican government, or just to make sure that they're 
closing down the porous border. Those are all things that are important. And um, I, I know that the drug problem doesn't go away when our cases end. Final minute is yours. Is there anything that you need to do to get across that we haven't talked about? Uh, no, I, I would say this, that uh, we have been incredibly busy over the last few years. It's been a good run, and uh, I can tell you that I'm hopeful to see you guys physically in the audience. Uh, I was able to spend a little bit of time back home in the eastern panhandle in Shannondale uh, over Thanksgiving and a little bit during Christmas, and so uh, love being back in my house again, and uh, just so long as the ice isn't too bad coming down the mountain. I uh, hope to see you guys in the near future. Patrick, have a great day. Thank you, Patrick, and, and best of luck. Yeah, thanks, guys. Be well. Attorney General Patrick Morrissey.